All right. Good morning. So today we're going to talk about April's duties as closing manager, the things that she does for you as her responsibility, but also things you need to make sure that you're doing as part of the contract to close process. So April, which one of those documents would you prefer I start with that you want to go through? If you could pull up the contract to close buyer agent side first, and we'll do that one first. Perfect. Can everybody see that? Okay, go for it, April. Okay, so my goal is just to basically go down this list and stop me if you have any questions. Majority of you are already doing this, know all of this information. Uh, so it's, again, like Doug said, it will be just a recap. Um, maybe some more questions on the my side as to uh, timing or things that I can do or, um, you know, I, or haven't been doing, et cetera. So let's just start with the, uh, this one. So days one to five, basically the biggest thing I remember from back when I started was setting expectations um, was a big thing. Uh, when you are meeting with your clients and you go under contract, just let them know what's coming. Again, most of you guys are doing this, but first time home buyers or people that have you know only done this once or twice have no clue. And thankfully, I have team members that remind me of that daily because I get in, you know, writing these emails and I'm just like, sign here, do this. And then, you know, I forget as well. So just making sure that expectations are, are set um, in the beginning is huge. So let them know inspections and surveys um, are an option and the professional services will be filled out, of course. Recommend all that will apply always. Um, and if you can, try to use our inspectors. So then the DD repair request, make sure you explain that. Um, let them know that no house is perfect. Be realistic. You know, let them know that you can't ask for everything. I guess you can ask for it, but most likely it won't happen. Um, appraisal and um, repair agreement must be done by the DD date. No extending DD dates if possible. And introduce me if, if, um, if you can, which you can. Um, and then email me letting me know that um, you're under contract, um, confirm CSU or closing checklist is completed and um, submit referral forms if applicable. All right. So before due diligence, call the lender to introduce yourself, especially if they're not on our team. Uh, let the lender know that you are there to help um, and that you'll be asking for updates throughout the process. Make sure the client is cooperating with the lender. That's huge. Um, in red, contacting the, the lender is a very important step. Your closing will be delayed if you do not maintain a close relationship with the lender. You guys know that. Anybody that's been doing this very long knows that the lender is key. Um, next, read all emails to your clients from everyone. Then you'll be in the loop. Uh, make sure inspections and closings are scheduled and the survey. I can order the survey or the attorney. Um, either one is fine. Obtain copies of all the DD inspection reports. You review these with your clients, then you submit the repair request in plenty of time. Check in with the lender again. And when the repair request is agreed upon, uh, drop the DD and ask for signatures um, as soon as you can. If any addendums to the contract are done, they must go to the lender and the attorney that can delay your closing. If it doesn't, by the DD date, you should have the following, the repair request signed, the appraisal completed, and you've been notified. Oh, I'm seeing some errors in this document. The additional EMD is collected, turned into the attorney and check for the receipt. And then last, does your buyer have loan approval? call the lender, check in with the lender. Um, after the DD date, but before closing, uh, make sure the closing manager has done the following or the warranties and the invoices, um, send the utility email, make sure all the docs for compliance are in the loop, uh, get your closing gift ready, schedule walkthrough. I'm happy to do that for you. Um, you guys seem to be doing that. So whatever works is fine. Review the Alta and make sure the buyer gets the lender approved CD an amount they need for closing. Um, a lot of new construction, I don't see. Um, it's always good to have a, another set of eyes. Um, new constructions are generally pretty easy, but um, 
shoot that one over to me if if you have the the chance lastly go to closing with a really cool gift and get paid so in a nutshell that is the buyer agent responsibility from contract to close um i've been doing this for quite some time so this just seems all like easy peasy to me but if there's anything in those steps that you have questions about or want me to help with you know just let me know hey april yeah uh, one thing just for the new people, I know us that have been doing it know not to do this, but I would say where you send, say to send everything to the lender and the attorney, I would make sure that they don't send the repair request over. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that could and be also on that, um, don't send the WDIR. Um, if it has. My, yeah. My, yeah. Unless it's VA and then it's required. So you've got to right. Yeah. Yeah. So I've sent the WDIR to the lender before and had one uh -huh, terminate. That was, that was like eight years ago. So I've learned my lesson, but um, anyway, yeah. Uh, that so was just to be point. clear, are you saying don't send the WDIR request or the no, clean? The report. The, uh, if it's a VA, you've got to send it. But if it's just something that the buyer wants, and it's not a VA loan, you definitely don't have to send it to the lender. Don't send it to the lender. I mean, if it's clean, it doesn't matter. But if it's not, definitely don't. Right. Yeah, I just had a VA where the WDR was not clean and then they fixed things and then they redid the report. I never sent the first report over. I just sent the last report okay. over, which still showed previous damage. And just for everybody's knowledge, if it says that on there, Juliana's experienced it and now me, you're going to have to have a licensed contractor go over there and verify that the house is structurally sound after the termite damage. So just get ahead of that. And I don't know why I didn't rush to learn from Juliana's um, experience, but yeah. Yeah. That was a nightmare. Who did you, does it, was it a licensed contractor or was it a structural person that had to go for uh, you? I, we did a licensed contractor. They said either one, but we yeah. only one could get a licensed contractor quick enough. So yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. But, All right. That was what we were going to point out on this end too. So. Hey, April, can I ask one question real quick? Um, yeah. For surveys, when we order a survey and you have, when you facilitate that, if they came back to us and said, hey, we'll have the, um, do you in your checklist that you have for what you're doing do you have a way to do you do you check to make sure we get that on time or do you have a way to where you can like maybe put that on your calendar and follow up yeah. because i don't want to show up the day of closing and be like where's the survey we thought we got one yeah and that has probably been one of my things that i need to improve on is definitely the follow-up on surveys Again, I get in so much of a habit of once I give it off to another vendor contractor, I'm just thinking they're going to get it when they said they are, right. and it doesn't happen. And it's happened with Brandon, I think, multiple times, actually. Um, so, no, when I order a survey, I just need to put it on my calendar to follow up, you know, a week before the, the date they said, hey, just checking in, you know, a couple of days before. So that's definitely something I need to uh, be better at. And thank you for pointing that out um and they the survey guys have been swamped but that's still no no reason for them to not have things when they're supposed to or at least let us know um so yeah i need to do better about, about well, that that was my point if they you know stuff stuff gets backed up and i understand that sure. but it like if they say it's going to be here on the fifth and it's the sixth in my opinion, they should proactively reach out to you and say, hey, we're going to be delayed a couple of days, but that's probably not going to happen. So if you have the ability to do that, that that's really the only thing I wanted to ask about. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And um, that should happen moving forward. Yeah. And, and honestly, we and uh, the surveys are ordered more up here in Raleigh than they are on the coast. Um, so it, it's an easy fix. Do you work with does the ocean air work with the same surveyor? Cause I know April, just this last contract, I went and asked Ray to order one just because of the experience that I had with the survey that we ordered for the last one. So are we only working with that one guy? Well, here's yeah. what I recommend that we do. April, I'm gonna recommend that we order through the attorney or have the attorney order it. Because I love that. 
they're used to using these folks and I'm assuming they're doing it for a reason. And they're, they're getting the invoice. They're right. Getting, yeah. That way you don't have to deal with handling the invoice. Right. The only thing is we still want to see the survey, right. right. And make sure that it's done here. And somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but if any issue comes up on the survey, it's going to be a title issue. So it doesn't matter if it's done after due diligence, we just need it done before closing. Right. Right. And we don't want to show up at closing and be like, Oh, darn, we ordered a survey. Do we have it? Right. Yep. And that's happened and it's unfortunate. So yeah, I'm totally on board with that. I actually uh, last week or week prior got um, Ray's surveyor. Um, and if he's not with, if we're not using Ray, if we're using McCullum or um, uh, Jackson, then we can still use that same guy um, or we can order through. I, I don't know that I've ever ordered one through Jim, but I'm sure we can. I honestly think ordering a survey up here through the attorney will get it done quicker because they're sending more business on the whole than we're. Sending. Yeah, that, I'm on board with that. that up a little yeah, bit. and I think that would be easier on you too. I do too. Yeah, one um, last thing for you to have to worry about. The only thing you got to worry about is seeing if you can get a day when it's going to be done so you can put it on our calendar so we can expect it and then be expecting a time to get it back. Yeah, so like, I think I think that's great. Um, anything, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I don't know if they, if the attorneys on the coast do that, I can check. Um, we haven't had as much of an issue on the coast as we have had up here. Um, and again, that could be just as much my fault as it could be them being busy or whatever. I knew, I do know that surveyors, the ones I've been using suck at communication, but again, it could just be the vendor, but no, I think that's great up here. We'll use the um, survey that the attorney uh, recommends and I'll send out a, if you send it to me, I will send the request to the attorney and I'll put it on calendars and stuff just to make sure that we know when it was ordered, when it's expected. Um, and then when we should have the drawings, a lot of times with the surveys, we'll get the feedback, Hey, it's fine. Lines are good. Corners are good, but we won't have the drawings until X date. So, um, you know, I try to let everybody know that too. Well, what I had done in April, and I don't know if this helped or didn't, but I emailed you Ray, and Steven all together and just said, we need a survey. So we were all in the That was so, perfect too. Because their communication, and, and honestly, my buy side, I will probably, I maybe Doug doesn't want to hear this, but I will most likely do all my business with Ray. So it's, I already know what to expect. So hopefully that's easier for you. I love Ray. I worked with Ray um, with uh, another office. So um, <laughs> uh, he's great. And his, and Steven's great as well. His assistant. Or paralegal. Yeah. So April, we'll just assume that if when you check that yes inspections on calendar thing in CSU that you're doing it um, as to include the survey if the survey is applicable. Yep, that sounds great. Okay. Um, Come here, heavy boy. Any other questions about the buyer side of this, or can we go to April's document? All right, Let's just one thing I didn't see on there um, and that I've run into issues before. If your client is getting a POA, you got to make sure that the lender and the attorney are in good communication because I've had, I've been at the closing table where the lender ordered it, but the attorney didn't get it and they thought it was sent. And so as the agent, you're not really in the middle of that process, but it's still a good idea to check in and make sure that the lender or the attorney has the POA in the right document because they'll need the original one. <laughs> they'll need the original one. That's yeah. a great idea. And especially if you know up front, which in some cases we don't, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's last minute and then we're scrambling. Right. Um, but either way, um, you know, I, yeah, that's good to know. Up because front. they're going to have to start the POA process. Like if, as soon as you know, you're going to need a POA, if the lender's getting it, you know, that takes time. So it's important to know that kind of out the gate. Yep. I, I just had that too, Janine. And like the lender had to approve the POA yeah. before yeah. we were even able yep. to use it. That's right. And the attorney has to make the attorney and the lender have to make sure that they are community. Cause like I said, I got to the closing table, the lender or the attorney didn't have it. Thank God my guy was in town and was able to come in and sign, but it's just a pain yeah, in the ass. Luckily, the ones that have come up last minute have been um, the attorney's turnaround 
was good. Um, but that's not always the case because you're dealing with multiple people. You've got the attorney, you've got the lender, you've got the buyers. Um, you know, so there's, there's multiple things going on. So if we know up front, that's definitely, that needs to go on this list. Um, and if they have the POA, it needs to be approved by the lender, correct? And the attorney. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I just added that to that list. So we should oh, be good at that point. Okay. Thank you, Janine. Yeah. For um, let's see. Let me go to the other one. Is the right one up now? It is. Okay. So very similar to the last document. This is what I'm actually doing when I get these things from you guys. Um, so in the initial phase, when I get the, the email or the notification that you're under contract, and a lot of times I see on um, WhatsApp uh, or, you know, whatever, contract, contract, that's great. But I, I just, my beginning point is when I get notification um, that it's in dot loop and CSU. So um, once I get that, the initial phase starts for me, print, review all the docs, um, and I create a folder on my end. I put the dates in the calendar um, and I invite the agent for inspections, due diligence, closing, and anything else that's going on. Um, I schedule closing with the attorney and then I enter information in CSU, anything that needs to go in there for on my side, receive and fill out attorney buyer seller docs. So um, as soon as you get the buyer and or seller side documents that are needed, just send them or forward them to me so I can go ahead and get that ball rolling. That would also, I would add POA docs on that as well. Um, hey, and that will go yeah. We got a question. So in CSU, do we have to email you separately? Nope. The Okay. Oh, whew, I was like, I've been doing Nope. That. My assumption, once I get the, um, a, the document from dot loop, you know, Hey, I'm under contract. I need this, that, and the other for inspections, you know, we're doing a mail away, um, is that it's already filled out in CSU. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just, just want to make yeah. sure email and that's fine. Okay. So April, to make it easier for you, when we submit the file in dot loop, you want us to make sure when we have that done, we've already got everything recorded in CSU. Is that, is that easier for you? That would be great. I mean, and, and I understand that you guys have so many things to send out and to check. Um, and a lot of times that doesn't happen simultaneously. So I hunt and peck in dot loop and I get the information that I need. But realistically, I would love it if CSU was completed um, by the time when you send me the notification that you're under contract and you need all the stuff because all the information I need is in is CSU in one place, you know, the- To the clarify, name. do not submit the loop unless CSU is completely done. Fair. Correct. Yes. <laughs> do not submit the loop unless all the documents are in the loop that apply before submitting. That would yeah. that includes the professional services disclosure, mm -hmm. which is if typically possible. the last document that no, 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 no. Okay. Done before they submit it because you need to know then what needs to be ordered. And it needs to be signed that they have approved and asked us to do that before you order them. That sounds like a plan. Hey, April, what is easiest for you for like new construction from the ground up where it's not going to be done for like seven months and there's like no due diligence, obviously, on new construction. So that's not filled out. Inspections, like, so for example, my clients that I just had, they were like, oh, we don't think we're going to do inspections, but it's obviously seven months out. Things could change. So I just left that blank. Yeah. For now. What's easiest for you? Just to can't leave it blank. Just yeah. put no for now and then go back and update if it changes later down the line. Um, I mean, and, and I'm assuming that you guys are recommending like pre drywall inspections. Um, and, and that's probably about the only thing until you get to closer to the end, um, unless there's issues. But if you want to just go ahead and send it to me, I can still get it on the calendar. I can check in, you know, a month before closing supposed to happen. Hey, you know, things still moving forward. Are they want inspections? When's the closing day? Does it change? So if you just want to go ahead and get that off your plate and send it to me, that's fine. Okay. We can always go back and revise the professional services if we need to. I just want something in place before you submit everything to April so it's done. That stuff can always change and it's fine for it to change 
We just need something signed and initialed when the loop goes to April. And this is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a written rule, but just so we understand, you should have everything submitted to April and no more than 24 hours after you officially go under contract. Cool, everybody cool with that? I think everybody's doing that for the most part anyways, but just as a reminder. Okay, April, go ahead. All right, so um, before uh, DD, this is what I'm doing. I'm emailing um, the letters that are in dot loop. So to the buyer, I'm introducing myself and that letter has um, a lot of information, the due diligence, the closing, the attorney, the inspection dates, et cetera. And um, the listing agent is basically getting an introduction um, as well with the DD and closing dates and time if we have it, or when I have it. And then I send one to the lender and the attorney also. And the attorney, I request the time generally, if one's not already set up or if it's not a POA. So then I'm scheduling the inspections um, that were entered into CSU and including surveys, but we just talked about that. And then, um, Emails and notifications. Yeah. Real quick, um, can you, when you're sending out those template emails through Dot Loop that you're sharing with the clients, can you just copy us on them too, just so we know when they go out? Sure. Okay. Yep. That should just be another box that you check when you hit to send it out or whatever in there because we're already. Oh, yeah. Here. That's super easy. I just didn't do it because it, it's very repetitive, but I mean, I'm happy to do that. Good. Okay. And that way we just know, you know, where things are in the process. Yeah. And as when a, I say April, they're like, oh yeah, I got to meet Well, here's the thing. As a reminder too, in Boomtown, when you move your client to pending, they get her bio video and an email through Boomtown too. So they're getting a lot of April info. It's also a good idea when you do your buyer consult or your, you know, you get your listing documents signed, remind them that at a certain point, uh -huh. April was going to come into play. You're still the primary contact, right? You're not going anywhere, but while you're out showing homes just like you were helping them or while you're putting the sign in their yard negotiating offers, April is there to help you facilitate the transaction for them. So that way, when they get that first email, they know it's legit. Right. When they, she starts getting stuff from April's dot loop, yada, yada, yada. Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, emails, notification. So then getting the copies of the inspection reports, making sure everybody has one has been copied um, and going in the right direction. Then working with agents and clients to schedule any repairs that need to be ordered or completed. That's usually the listing or seller side clients. All right, so now after DD, but before closing, making sure the warranties ordered, um, utility emails gone out, invoices to attorney, the referral uh, form should be in dot loop. Um, and then a uh, key one is reviewing the CD and making sure the agents um, approves the CD and, and the lender has sent it to everybody and the amount is correct for the uh, people, for the clients to bring to closing. That's a big one. Uh, uh, quickly about the referral forms. The referral mm -hmm. form should be in the loop before you go under contract because ideally you have these before you even really start working with these folks. Okay. And it, I see it in different people's loops in different places. The referral form should be in the agency folder in the loop okay. because it okay. has to do with agency. So please make sure you're putting it there. I know some folks, I think I've seen it in like the contracts and offers. Some people put it in the closing folder. Going forward, please just make sure it's in the agency folder. And then after closing, uh, I compliance the file. So I go through every file, look at every document in your loop uh, and whatever is um, needed for that file and make sure there's signatures on it. Um, so that's the compliance piece to it. And that's why a lot of you or some of you will get like, hey, there's a you know professional services in here, but it's not signed or there's a whatever and it's not seller and buyer signed. You know, we might have one side of the CD, but not the other. Um, so I'm going through every document in dot loop just to make sure that what's in there is signed and compliant. So, and, April, with that, like, so what's, is that the requirement? Is that, that you have both, both signatures, both sides? Yes. Because I, I feel like some attorneys are like lost when I say that. Um, I mean, well, they I don't know how to say what's an Alta. 
we need a signature from a buyer and a seller for the file. Got it. Yeah. I mean, unless Doug says different. So April, let me ask, like, we just had that closing on Southwick. I, I assumed, and I, I hate when I assume, because that's not, so I'm sorry for that, but we didn't have this seller and buyer sign. So I reached out for it. Moving forward, should that be something that you do or that I do? Um, I'm happy to do it. Krista, I always I email mean, the attorney. What? I always e I always email the attorney um, if I'm on the buy side and say, hey there, you know, please let me know when we're on record and also send my commission check to my BIC at blah, 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 and pass along signed copies of the CD. Well, I'm more focused on the buy side. I, I have no problem on it's the sell side. And we kind of came into this a little bit backwards blindfolded. So it was really just one. I guess the sell side is really where I'm, and April knows I'm sort of landing these very bumpy. So um just that was the last final thing that we needed and i realized monday that we didn't have it yet and that's fine um that can just be um i don't want to say on a case by case but maybe and my what and my assumption is when they send the checks to doug that they're sending a cd but i, I don't know is that the case every it's time wired like the commission was wired yeah if some of if they wire them they're not sending them over um some people um some attorneys that we don't usually work with will mail a check without a cd yeah For a buy uh, side, you leave the closing with a signed copy my, my recommendation and you guys can do this if you want um, but what I do is I don't ever bring a sheet of paper out of the attorney's office. When I go to a buyer closing, if it's a new build, if it's one of the attorneys that I use regularly, I tell them at the table before I leave, will you please scan and email me a copy of the CD and the Alta? Here's my business card. Because I just don't want to have to deal with the paper. I've never <coughs> had a complaint. I've had one attorney say, well, I don't know about the Alta. I'll have to ask the listing agent for their permission. I've never had anyone not do that. If it's the seller, if you're representing the seller, I think at some point during the conversation, you know, when you check the final CD or whatever it is the day before closing or the day of, make that request then. Please don't forget to wire my commission. And also, can you please send me a scanned copy of the Alton CD? And if you tell them that you need it for your um, shit, what are compliance files, no one is ever going to complain about that. Right. But well, to tack on to that too, most of these paralegals are sending emails out to verify or to inform that the, it's been recorded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a perfect and easy time just to reply if they're not already attached to it to say, hey, can you send over a scan of the CD real quick? I need it for my compliance. So there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, so just make sure you're asking. Um, and because we have attorneys do it in different ways where we're picking up checks or mailing checks or, in the triangle now we're getting wires from everybody so it's even more important that we remember to get them to email the cds just try and make sure that it's going to fall on somebody's responsibility to do that so hopefully they're informing you when it's recorded and that's a great time to ask for that i do want to go, ahead. go ahead oh the coast definitely is not uh they're not sending out a lot of emails hey we're recorded so um it's it's definitely up here in raleigh when they're letting us know that so it, that's fine. I'll just put that on, you know, the a line item to make sure that we have both buyer and seller sign. One thing that I just added to the after closing thing is April, because I need your help with this too, is the second bullet point. Make sure that these numbers are getting updated. A lot of times during due diligence, purchase price changes, yeah. um, you know, because of repairs or concessions or appraisals and all that. And, you know, the first thing I do when things come in is look at the check and then the check doesn't match the commission that's in the system. And then that's because the closing date changed or the purchase price changed and all that. So everybody, before you submit for compliance, you need to make sure that you go back and update the numbers in the dot loop and in your CSU before you submit it to April. And then April, I need your extra set of eyes before I look at it to make sure that they've done that. So please just make sure you do that. Just cause it's closed don't mean you hit submit because things change all the time as we know. Yeah, and I have to admit that's that's one thing that I, you know, if I see the contract, I'll, you know, a lot of times I'm like, oh, let me just double check it. And that, well, I actually do when I check the CD, but if I don't see it, then I don't know it's changed. So um, I can do better with that as well. 
or and also if you're adding amendments that change that stuff make sure you're updating your numbers when you're adding those amendments into your files and sharing those with everybody or if you just want to share it with me you know i can go in and, and add that too if something's changed clo uh, closing costs or um whatever i can do that so we as soon as we get the amendment we want obviously we send it to the attorney and the lender we're supposed to send that to you as well or do we just go in there and change it because i just had a dd change i mean i don't know i mean I, there's, I, if there's you nothing it, april needs to do with the amendment okay as long as you're sending it to the lender and the attorney and there's I no reason know. to hand it to her to send to the lender and the attorney no um, I so just add well, it, and send it to the attorney and make sure you update the stuff I do go in the file. It won't impact what she has to do. It'll already be there. I do go in the file and look to see if there's amendments um, when I'm checking the CD, though. So. Yeah. So she checks as she's doing her compliance or checking the CD, but she yeah. shouldn't be changing the numbers for you. You guys can do that when you're adding the new documents to the loop. Any questions? <coughs> Y'all got anything else? No. Was this helpful for everybody, April? Is it helpful for you? I, I hope so. Um, yeah. Right, but I guess, who do you guys prefer to work with for home warranty? Old Republic. Okay, and they are $620? I think maybe that's their baseline pricing. I haven't looked. Because I'm so used to, and April knows this, I've just wrote 590 because that's what I'm used to writing. And yeah that i have always written 600 inflation you might want to just write 650. right okay okay and the one i'm usually ordering or requesting is 620. that seems to be the best one uh, changes change that language in my contract just you yeah. know keep in mind if you put an arbitrary number they have to pay the difference right yeah. that's yeah um, so you might want to make sure you're not writing anything yeah like, you're oh, not writing way. anything less than right. the, the bottom and line. the old the old Republic um, warranty is the same cost here that it is on the coast. It's it, the one I'm using is the 620. Okay. And then, so I just need to get on off of using HWA. Yeah, they're terrible. She's crazy. She's oh my gosh, she is legit cray cray. All right, we won't digress on that, but yeah, that's why we use Old Republic. Um, do you use the same person, April? Do you use that Stephanie Midget lady at the coast for? Yes. Okay, cool. Good for her. Um, she was nice and came to the office. All right. Any other questions, anybody, about anything? And if, I'll say if there's anything on this list that um, you want me to do better, do differently, you know, specifically for you, reach out to me. I am willing to, um, to help you any way that I can. Just remember, we're trying to streamline these so the process is basically the same every time. It's like an assembly line, you know, so the less changes we have, the more that everybody can handle it the same way, the smoother the ship will sail. I think that like on something like a, well, obviously survey is different, but like on the um, home warranty or anything, anytime that you're sending out a request just to copy the agent, just so... I know in my head, check that's been done. So I'm not like a week later at nine o'clock at night thinking, did that thing get ordered? <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, that's my goal every time. If that's not happening, it's a miss on my my yeah. part. And usually I will add the agent in the, the document. So you should be on the warranty anyway, okay. but yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea to uh, copy us when you send out requests for basically anything. That way we don't have to come back and bother you to say, hey, have you done that? And then you have to go look just to verify that you've done it. Yep, sounds good. Cool. Any other questions from anybody else? Not related, but is anybody working with a Brandon Mac here on the coast? That name sounds familiar. Did I send that name to you? That name no. came up somewhere. I'll have to go back and look. It might have been like Facebook Messenger. <clears throat> I'll sidebar you about it. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Any questions? Thanks, April. Yeah. Oh, April, anytime. April, this was great. I really appreciate everything. Uh, as a reminder,